today's error. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. Today's error. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. It's the first scripture Bible passage you are reading. So I expect us to be on our feet as we all will read together. Second Timothy 4 3 is on screen. After the count of three, let's read one, two, and three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves what features father we ask for deep revelation again today thank you father in jesus name and amen be seated now look at this word clearly the time that the scripture is talking about that scripture shows is now it says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine which means they will not be able to receive it anymore you know what when you say somebody can endure i can't fake it i can't continue and what is happening today social media has empowered a lot of voices you know in those days when you hear the word of truth in church you listen, you celebrate it, you go practice it. Today, people hear the word in church, they go online to ask for public opinions. What do you think about this? Now, and you see that people now begin to debate, trying to twist scriptures to suit their own understanding. Now, this is the time. The Bible says, but according to their own desire, because they have itching ears, they will heap for themselves what? Teachers. Now, when I summarized this particular verse, you know what I discovered? I discovered that what the Bible is saying here that during this particular season, there will be a talk to despise the ministry of God. God's servants. Now, this thing, this what the scripture is talking about is that there's going to be a time, and this is the time when the ministry of servants of God will be will be despised. People will pick the names of you know, you go on social media, you see how they talk about pastors. They may even in fact there was one I was listening to. I said, This man is not even afraid. He started speaking about Pastor Adibuyi and calling him fraud, calling him different kind of names. Now, people will no longer be able to endure sound doctrine. Now, what is sound doctrine? Sound doctrine is deep teaching that reveals the mind of God. That's why, please, church, I'm your pastor. I've come to talk to you today. Do not allow anybody to make you despise the ministry of God's servants. I will explain. People talk about the ministry of God's servants today as if the ministry of the Holy Spirit has nullified the ministry of God's servants. You know, some people say, since you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need pastors again. Ah, the Lord Jesus has given us the Holy Ghost and because the Holy Ghost has come, the ministry of minister pastors ended that's a lie in fact i know of some churches i hear of their churches they don't have name they don't have pastor they say they just gather on a on a meeting day and they will say whoever has a revelation come and share anybody to buy in somebody will just come he introduce himself as brother so and so he will just share another person will confirm another person will confirm and they will close the service and you see them going on air, saying, no, there, somebody cannot be your pastor. There's nothing like pastor. They, you know, these are the end time. But let's look at what the Bible says. Has the ministry, sorry, does the ministry of the Holy Spirit nullify the ministry of God's servants? 
Let's look at Ephesians chapter 8 from verse chapter 4, sorry. Ephesians 4, 8 to 16. Ephesians 4, 8 to 16. She share and share me mimo. Show ti so he share he ran share a wen he ran share all on on ni. Now to two months ago, tabag by me mimo she a o ni lo kani a wen he ran share all on ti all on on lo funwa. Let's look at this scripture together carefully. He said, therefore he says, when he ascended on high, who ascended? Jesus. He led captivity captive and gave gifts to what? To men. He gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. What does he mean? But that he also first descended, he was first buried, you know, in the lower part of the earth. That was his death. In the lower part of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended. Jesus, we are far above the heavens that he might Feel all things. He ascended. He's talking about Jesus. Move on. And he himself gave some to be what? Apostles. Some evangelists. And some pastors and teachers. Look at this. This was after the Holy Ghost had been given in Acts of the Apostles. Now, this is the writing of Paul. After everybody has received the Holy Ghost, they've started doing ministry, Paul caught the revelation of calling. He now said, it was he. We'll come back to this. Keep this for me. We'll come back to it when I need it. It was he that gave some to be apostles. It was he that gave some to be a, a, a prophet. It was he that gave some to be evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now, what does that mean? It means that the ministry of the Holy Spirit did not nullify the ministry of God's servants. See, I hear. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, I wrote here, it was after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Paul the Apostle caught this deep revelation. He showed that Jesus our Lord gave these gifts unto men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. Jesus himself gave the gift to men. It means that the ministry of the Holy Spirit did not nullify the ministry of God's servants. So let me tell you this. God's servants are human agents of the Holy Spirit to us. I come again. God's servant. God's servant. Take note of that are human agents of the Holy Spirit to help us understand the ways of salvation. Who are God's servants? They are agents of the Holy Spirit to help us what? Understand the ways of salvation. Now, there are so many things the Holy Spirit will teach you that you won't understand until a fellow man like you begins to share from the understanding they have. Am I communicating? There are some things the Holy Ghost will teach you. That's why I come again. God's servants are human agents of the Holy Spirit to help us understand the way of salvation better. So if you see anybody talking against God's servants, please don't join them. Don't make a contribution. Oh, this one will come and I want Bishop anymore. Don't join them because God's servants are human agents of the Holy Spirit to help us understand the ways of salvation. How do I know this? Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, verse 23 to 26. Let's go there. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, from verse 23 to 26. I want to take you in this teaching so that you catch understanding. And I know by you, the revival will begin to take place. Acts chapter 27 from verse 23. Look at this. He said, For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve. An angel of God to whom I belong. An angel of God to whom I serve. Saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God had granted you 
all those who sail with you. You must be brought before Caesar. God has granted you. Therefore, take heart, men. For I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Now, look at this. God wanted to speak the word in the presence of Caesar. He used Paul the Apostle. The Holy Ghost won't just come down. Imagine you, are, you enter your bedroom and you just hear a voice. La kunle or de kunle. You will run. That's why the Holy Ghost will use human agents. Every servant of God that is here, understand that you are an agent in the hand of the Holy Spirit to help people understand the ways of salvation. Now, can you share or share me? That's my assignment. That's why, see, don't join them to speak against servants of God, please. If you think our work is easy, because some of you, you look at, maybe you see Bishop Oedipo flying jet. You see the glamorous aspect of some pastor's life and you just conclude that this pastor is easy. Please come and start church. I will encourage you to help you rent your first hall. The work is not easy. I remember I was, I was sharing with my wife one day. Somebody called me in the morning. No, let me not even go so far. Last week, Sunday, I came here to preach to you. I wasn't happy because my stepsister died. And I was to go and bury her that day. There was no pastor to conduct the service. They were expecting me. But that me, but that me, and came up, but I went to bury my own junior uh, stepsister. I, but I had to come to church to preach to you. I had to dance with you. I, I, I will not come here and be showing you that my sister just died. That's the work of a pastor. Where somebody is telling him bad news, another person is telling him good news. The same day that somebody is saying, uh, my mother just died. Somebody is saying, sir, praise the Lord, they've just given me the visa. And the pastor had to be between those moods to be happy with all. I remember the day I was to dedicate the, the complex of the Olowos. They called me, Papa, come around, come around. Okay, I was to lay foundation. You had to lay the foundation. That same day as I was preparing to go was when uh, one of our brothers called, Amikebu. He said, Papa, Papa, Emabo, Ah, Ti Mobashi, Ma Consul, Ah, Egbomo She She Kun, Sin, 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 Sin. Then, okay, I'm coming. I went to lay the foundation for the Olowus. Rejoice with them. And move from there to go and console the Aledares for the person that just died. The work of a pastor is not an easy task. Imagine God will send you to go and declare a message. You can't fight the God because you can't see him. But you will be the one they want to fight. Never join the multitude to speak against God's servants in any way. Listen, the fact that there are fake does not mean there are no genuine. Look, to fake siwa. I want to jack you, Bobo. Why? Bobo, but they won't have you go on it. Oh, wow. There are fake servants of God. We can't dispute that. But it does not mean there are no original. There are genuine servants of God. Men that have genuine call. They are not after your money. All they want is for your life to be in line with the purpose of God. So don't join, and because you, you have encountered one or two fakes, you know, at times, I, I, I like listening. I listen to most of these things that some of them say online. One lady was talking about her experience in Redeemed Christian Church of God and was saying all the miracles that Pastor Adebue performed is fake, that God used Pastor Adebue to perform is fake, there are no miracles, there are this, you know. When I listen to her story, okay, yes, she was hot. She was a pastor's wife in Redeemed. They didn't understand the ministry of Pastor Adebue very well. Her husband wanted the kind of grace that Pastor Adebue carried. So he was doing unusual fast. He died in the process. So this lady took offense. He said, if actually miracle is real, the God that, that Pastor Adebue is calling is also answer her husband. 
Share on share, we see. Let's go deeper. So, what's your message? Everybody, don't join anyone. Are you hearing me? To speak against any servant of God. If there is anything about their ministry you don't understand, what should you do? Ask. If you cannot ask, leave them to God. So don't miss the first phase. Who are God's servants? Let me see whether you caught it. God's servants are what? Human agents of the Holy Spirit to help us understand the ways of salvation. Who are God's servants? Human agents of the Holy Spirit to help us understand the ways of God. Let's go to the next question. How should you relate with God's servants? Since I say don't criticize anyone, how should you relate with God's servants? And you that are God's servants here, you're welcome. God bless you. Make sure you learn from this. How should you relate with God's servants? I wrote here, like the Bereans. Like the Bereans. Now, how did the Bereans relate? That's in Acts. I think that should be around Acts 11 or so. Either 11.35 or so. I can't remember the verse. The Bible says every time they listen to Apostle Paul preach, they will go back home. They will go and confirm whether what Apostle, preach, Apostle Paul preached is in line. Now, how should you relate with God's servant? I wrote here, respect them. But do not allow the respect you have for them make you neglect confirming from the written word what, whatever they preach or do. Now let me come again. It's too long. Respect them. But do not allow the respect you have for them make you neglect confirming from the written word what they do or teach. Now, to too much, but because some of you will say, ah, my pastor is marrying a second wife, so I'll go and marry a second wife. Even my pastor fought at the junction, I will fight at the junction. Don't forget that they are servants of God, men of God, women of God. They are humans too. Hello? It is not everything they do that is right. Many years ago, I, les I listened to Mommy, Ad uh, Mommy Adela Kun's message. She said, uh, the title of the message is In Search of a Perfect Mentor. And she was speaking Bible prophets, servants of God from scriptures, and showing us that they were imperfect. Elijah was a man of God, very anointed, but had anger issues. Peter was a servant of God, very anointed, but inferiority complex was his own issue. Moses was a man of God, very well anointed, but he too was battling with the spirit of anger. Ah, Moses, he were 40 days. Moses, Sokale, Rubosi, Orisha, Untofi, 40 days, Igba, Osi, Formale. Solomon was a very wise man, but his problem was beautiful guests. Very intelligent man. Bring any questions. Solomon will answer you. But he had 700 girlfriends. Hello. Answer me now. Hello, 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 hello. So, what am I talking about? Respect God's servants. But anything you see them do, and whatever they preach, what should you do? Check from scriptures. To see whether what they are teaching you, or what they are doing is in line. You don't just follow a servant of God blindly. Anything you do, I will do. Anything you do, I will do. Anything you do, I will do. You don't follow a servant of God like that. And you two that are ministers seated in front of me, don't enforce people to just follow you. prophet. No, 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 no. Let me recite that place again. Respect them, but do not allow the respect you have for them make you neglect confirming from the written word 
whatever they do or teach, whatever they do or teach. Now, and this was the mistake of our old prophets. You see that Eli did not have a family. We didn't know his wife. Somewhere too, we didn't know his wife. Oh, did you hear of Samuel's wife? Eli's children was corrupt. Samuel's children too were corrupt. They were just doing what their masters were doing. But as you honor God's servants, what should you do? Let the Bible be your point at which you balance things. Concentrate. Let's go deeper. I wrote here, every revealed or spoken word that contradicts the written word is never from God. That's why you must check. Now, that's why I relate. I thank God for my fathers in faith. I thank God for Bishop Adelak. I thank God for Bishop Oedeku. I thank God for Reverend Samson and Jitumobi. I thank God for uh, Pastor Yi. I thank God for all of them. I listen to their preaching and I still make sure that I use my Bible to balance whatever I hear. Am I communicating? May you not miss it. I didn't hear you. Amen. Quickly, let's look at the next thing. Natures that those that have these gifts manifest. Now, this one is for ministers that are here. Natures that those that have these gifts and want to be near is share and run share. Bow only one she man more way, but only I want you to do my jail. Tell my film of you are a bunten in any. Now, what are those natures? That's why if they call you pastor, they call you evangelist, they call you prophet, they call you teacher, if you don't manifest any of the natures, find out if you are just bearing a nickname. I'm trying to merge everything together so that the members here too will learn. Number one, look at the one they call the apostle. You see that that's how they started. Listen, the apostles have a burden to raise a peculiar kind of people. Who are the apostles? These ones are servants of God with a burden to raise a peculiar kind of people. They are not doing what others are doing. You know, if you see some churches, they came out, they'll say, I am, I am the new apostolic church. You see another one, I am the new living faith. And when you go to them, they are not different from living faith except by their name. They are not apostles. Now, who are apostles? They, they have this burden to raise peculiar people. If you see uh, and hear Pastor Kumuyi preach, no matter what he preaches, you know that this man, he has a, a burden to raise holy people. If you listen to Reverend Lukoya preach, all his preaching, you will know that this man has the word, a burden to raise praying people. If he likes share for three minutes, he will lead prayer. If you listen to Bishop Oedeko preach, you will know that this man, the burden he has is to raise covenant people. He cannot preach without talking about covenants. 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 If you listen to Pastor Prince, Lee, you will see that all he has, he has a burden to raise people that are possibility conscious. It's possible, Joe. Don't tell me that it's not possible. That's, that's my, the apostleship I have. They, are, they don't want to do the same thing that everybody is doing. Am I communicating? Okay, Apollo and Papos too. Avi, is it a nickname? Okay, I don't know if it's okay nickname anymore. <laughs> now, let's confirm it from scriptures. Romans 11.13, Galatians 2.8. Romans 11.13 and Galatians 2.8. Look at this. It says, For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am what? I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry. Paul, you alone not know me, someone Jew. Apostle, you don't know me, someone Gentiles. I want like that, boy. 
Now, look at the next one. In Galatians 2.8. Galatians 2.8, fast. For he who walked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to who? To the circumcised. I want to have a Peter I want to have a coil of the Jews. That's why you see that when Peter got to the Gentiles, he couldn't eat with them. Paul had to confront him. Why are you behaving like this? Is it because they are not circumcised? He couldn't, that is not his ministry. That's not his field. So he couldn't flow. How do we know apostles? I wrote it here, my man. Here, his hunger, passion, and message will reveal that he is called to raise a set of his hunger, his, his passion, his message will reveal it. The apostle is unique because he can manifest the natures of other gifts. If it's the apostle to my to she sin, only will be evangelist, only will be pastor. Alone to man bed when she prophets in Bami, prophecy, or to lay teach. That's why he's the apostle. That's why they found work. When they found work, before an evangelist comes, he has done evangelism. Before a pastor comes around, he's pastoring the people. Before they find a teacher that will put they put in charge of the church, he's teaching the people. Before they find a prophet that will come work, he's working already prophesying. See here. What is the nature of the next one? The prophets. Look at this. Look at this about the prophets. The prophets. They have a deep hunger. A deep hunger to understand the mysteries of God and life. Prophets in your mama woke about Lucy. No, I she didn't bend your room of Emma. I she didn't bend your room of Emma. That's why we know prophets by their prayer and, or by their sorry, by their lifestyle of prayer and fasting. They are always show me. Show. They want to, they don't want to know it by studying, they want to know it by revelation. That's why you see that God reveals things to them. Should I come again? Okay, they want me to come again. Prophet, they have a deep hunger to understand the mysteries of God and of life. I wrote here, you will see them fast. You will see them pray. You will see them wait before the Lord to have him reveal secrets. You will see them fast. You will see them pray. You will see them wait upon the Lord. How do you know somebody have a prophetic calling? That's how you know. They are always trying to know. And say, my worry. Hey, Father, why in the next one, one month? Or in the next one week? Are you can for me? Sure not. Let me wait upon the Lord to see. They want to pray. Lord, show me the mystery. They are always looking for mysteries. That's why when they speak, in fact, they are the ones that carry much crowd, most crowd. But they are not supposed to be in charge over people. You know why? They cannot continue to see vision every day. That's why when a prophet decides to say, I'm going to be in charge of the church, you will see that there will be errors. He's not patient. If you misbehave, he will curse you. He cannot wait to dig deep. To know why the people are not growing. He doesn't want, he cannot wait to say, let me study, study, study and find out. Look at it. Acts chapter 13, 1 and Acts chapter 21, 10 and 11. Don't join them to say there is no more prophets again. There are prophets. Prophetic ministry. Wa. I'm an apostle. I manifest some of the gift of prophets as God uses me once a while. Now in the church that was in Antioch, this is after baptism of the Holy Ghost. There were what? Certain what? Prophets and teachers. Can you see? Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Ninja, Lucius, Lucius of Serene. And so all of the prophets were in the church. 
that we are pastors here, that I'm a pastor, does not mean I should tell you that no, there is no prophetic, there is prophetic grace. So, I have met with some people and I know that this one is a called prophet. They are not after your money. Let me tell you one. I have this friend. He was my junior in his school, secondary school. His name is Reverend Dennis. He's a prophet. He came to visit me some time ago. We now went together to a friend, a senior minister. That senior minister just finished beating his wife. Nobody knew. Fellowship. Prophet Dennis Ladebe. This is my friend. We went to school together. Can you know him? I said, okay, let him preach. Be a shake by microphone. Don't preach. Ah, sir. I see your wife crying. In the whole congregation. Why did you beat her? Pastor Wale saw no. Or Pastor Wale saw no. You shouldn't reveal such prophecies in public. You know, we pastors, what we do in our own is that God puts our own prophecy in teachings. You know, as I'm preaching, I say, and you, and as I, hey, hey, why will a man beat his wife? It's a madman that will beat his wife. He will be looking and say, she pastor monkey mo no yao mini. That's how pastors operate. But we can't preach in here. But prophets will go straight. Yao pastor to some kunu lebo she boom yeah. Lo the microphone saja den. But she man no mini. Oh yeah, Jackie Dennis, one more. Acts chapter 21, 10 and 11 fast. Are you learning something at all? So, if you have prophetic grace, this is how you will know it. You will have this hunger to know the mysteries of God and life. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named what? Agabus. Agabus came down from Judea. He was in the church. And when he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus said the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt. Oh, they rebel. They were now begging Paul, don't go. This will happen to you. Paul said, I will go. Let me not spend time there. Number, th number the third one. The evangelists. What is their nature? How do you know them? They have a deep hunger for souls. And when evangelists, woman need tara fu okan. Mon ki fe ki okan shekbe. I tara yen ki je ki ara won. Tabi okan won ko bale. Deep hunger for souls. This hunger drives them. To use every available means to minister salvation. That's what they, that's how you know those that have evangelistic gift. They are ready to go anywhere to win souls. I know somebody like that in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Reverend Kale Jaye. He announced of recent one million souls. Or I die. And it's going from rural area to rural area. When redeem wants to have program, it is him they send out. He will be the one to go and win souls, create branches, send to headquarters, please send pastors. That's why if you don't have that gift, you won't have the burden, the nature. If you have that title and you don't have this nature, drop it. It's just a nickname. It's right here. What about the pastors? What are the natures of the the nature of the pastor? How do you know you are a pastor? 
they have special concern and patience for people in helping them to grow in the way of salvation. I come again. They have special concern and patience for people in helping them to grow in the way of salvation. You will see that a true man or a true pastor is very patient. A true pastor is very concerned. I want people you dag back. That's why Paul said, uh, my children oh, oh, in whom I travail until Christ is formed. A real pastor will not say, Kotia, come in. But the problem is, the level of the level of the level of the A true pastor doesn't say that. A true pastor is concerned. He's always looking at what do I teach again? How will these people grow? How will they have testimony? That's why, because of his concern, a true pastor goes out to read, to acquire knowledge, to make sure he teaches the people until they grow. So, if you say you have pastoral calling and you are not concerned, you have pastoral calling and you are not patient, how do you know people that have a call to serve in the crutch? Ah, baby poo poo doesn't irritate them. A woman came to apply at the school at a level to work as a cleaner in the school and crutch attendant. So we employed her after the interview, told her what to pay, she agreed. I would just notice that right there in the toilet, because I was I was watching, I would go around. You hear you decrease, you decrease, carry that potty, carry, carry that potty by yourself, carry it by yourself. Imagine you know the shame, you know the shame, you know the shame, two years, two years, you the poop for body, carry that potty by yourself, carry pam, 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 pam. After four days, he called me. It's a Calava woman. Oga, me, I know if they remove Pampas. I know, I know, I know if they remove Pampas. I said, sir, ma, you, did I not tell you about this job? Did I, am I aware you? He said, no. Did we not agree? He said, we agreed. Are you not a grandmother? So I said, I'm sorry. I don't think you can do this job. Sir, if you are a pastor, you'll be patient. Remember, remember I've slapped me before two times. <laughs> Maybe you end up as a pastor's wife. You are saying, <laughs> remember, I've slapped me twice. One of our daughters, um, I didn't see her for a long time. So after her mom died, I sent a message to her. I collected her phone. And she said she was angry with me. I said, why are you angry? I should be the one that is angry. I had some things that you people did. I sent for you, you refused to come. He said, but sir, they told me this and this and this. I said, but did you verify from me? So having, I allowed her to pour all her mind. But I didn't pour my own mind of the things that she, they said she said. And I said, but all these things you said, they say I said. I never said such. But do you know that I'm still your father? He said, Papa, in fact, the mistake I made, I will have asked you. I said, that's it. You will have asked. See, you can't help people to grow if you are not patient. And you can't do it if you are not called. Pastoral calling is a calling. It's not something you do because you are a mean of a pastor. It's a calling. Hey, Chira, I want to tell you, I'm going 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 to tell you, Eh, 
thanksgiving papa ah adu ayin de gba lori mi o te yin na de gbo yin to lo na bi to lo awa fi 2007 lo the pastor is patient elomi ani le pada mo i remember one day we went to dedicate the house of one of our members at ayegun olomi i bought fuel of 5000 when i was going 3000 when i was coming and when the person gave me an envelope it was 1000 naira she papa e wo wo po lowo mi gan on lu de compel mi pe ma gbe moto yin won tun fi moto mi keru ke e je gbe moto yin won tun fi keru die so emi o mo ke tori ki se tori prayer na se pe mi lo tori kon fe fi moto mi keru ni ah e ju pastor ri So how do you know them? You notice that special concern and patience for people in helping them grow. The last set of people are the teachers. How do you know he's a teacher? He has a special body to find practical steps. A teacher has special body, hunger, to find practical steps. This is why his messages are in series. A teacher has a special burden, itara, to find practical steps. The teacher wants to know. He wants to study. He wants to research. What are the steps you need to take? A teacher will tell you, I believe in miracles. So I believe in miracles. It's not that I, I despise miracles. But let's look at practical ways to how you can get the miracle. Are you know what I'm saying? If you tell an evangelist to take offering, he can make altar call from the offering. You first have to give your life. If you have not given your life and you are bringing your money, that's an evangelist. A pastor will tell you that that their money is important because where a man's treasure is, there his heart will be. Let's bring his money here. Where his treasure is, his heart will be here. Then we we'll begin to tell him more about Jesus. But a teacher wants to show you. Let me show you 21 steps. I'm summarizing. We have five minutes. What is the purpose of these gifts? Now go back to where we didn't finish. Ephesians 4. We were in verse 11. What is the purpose of these gifts? Kennedy, ti jesu she yonda awan ebun yin, ebun apostoli, ebun prophet, ebun evangelist, pastor at your local Ephesians 4 no, 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 we're in verse 11 we're in verse 11 and him okay, we've taken, okay, we're in verse we should be in verse 12 now, 12 now it says, look at, look at the first reason for this gifting, it says for the equipping of the saints, no, show me the old King James, it will say for the perfecting Where are you? For the perfecting of the saints. Listen, do you know that the, the day you gave your life to Jesus, that's not the day you get perfect. The day you gave your life to Jesus, there will still be some natures in you that you'll be battling with. But when these five gifts continue to minister to you, their job is to help you to reach perfection. That's why I say, every one of you that are ministers in this church, you don't only lead the people by teaching, you should lead them by examples. If we tell them that service is 6 o'clock, we should be here ahead of them. They should not be saying, hey, I want a minister. I want to share now, I want to share now, I want to share we should not be saying that. We should not, they should not be saying that about us. If we want to teach them to give, we should be the first to lay the example. If we want to teach them that, okay, as this is how you should live your life as a Christian, they should see it in us. Are you offended? No. We can't help them to be perfect if we are not.
That's why if we are going to teach them to be honest, we should be the one to set the pace. You know, I love it that anywhere my name is mentioned, I love it that they don't find any fault. To the best of my knowledge, but don't, that's not possible. As long as me, I'm not fault, I don't have fault. But some people just decide to rob people. But you live a honest life. So our first assignment is to help the believers, the church. And it's not only by teaching. I've been married, this is 22 years, sir. I can say it to you. If people say, Pastor, it's not possible to be married to one woman and don't have a girlfriend, I am saying it again. I am a practical example. I don't have girlfriend. I don't have side chick. I have only one woman all my life. Ma? One pastor came to our program and was, he went outside to tell the people that he said, lie. Because he has girlfriend. He said, it's not possible. Ah, that fine man, not to have girlfriend. He said, lie. But if there is anyone that can prove me wrong, come out and say it. Do you know why? I want to set the example of perfection for you. Yeah. I don't only want to show you heaven. I want to make heaven myself. Show us that scripture. I'm about running up. For, for the perfecting, for the perfecting of the saints. Who are the saints? The saved. What's our second assignment? To prepare them. Listen. Sorry. For the work of the ministry. Look at this one. For the work of the ministry. For in share, not share. Our giftings is one for the work of the ministry and two to prepare the people for the work of the ministry. At least by now, we've started training the next generation. That's why you see us calling ages 15 to 21 because I see that a wise man said a church that neglects the children will die with the adult. They're already getting old. He is about 50. You are above 50. Are you above 52? <laughs> One in grammar. So we are preparing the, the next generation. I thank God for the generations of the people that we have raised. That's why I told rebuke uh, Brother Gabriel. I said you are, you are a younger generation. But you are already behaving like the older generation. The older generation don't come to service often. They come when they like. They come at times that they like because they are getting tired. But life was not programmed like that. Though. The Bible says even at their old age, we are supposed to be fruitful. I said, but you don't follow that style. You are the next breed. You should sacrifice enough time to, for, for the Lord. So when you get to that age, there should be track record. Of the things you have done. Are you learning? And the last part. He said for the edifying. Of the body of Christ. Your giftings is not only for one church. It's for the entire body. Don't let your mind be locked up. By the four corners of this wall. Servants of God please. That's why I go on Facebook. Go on Instagram. Reach the world. Some of you think it is only from here that we get resources for me. We have people abroad that watch and say, sir, how can we contribute towards this? We send the, account, the, the church account number. And they will send money into it. Before we distribute this ambil, what was it? Before this ambil got to the local church here, 
I've sent it up far to all the people abroad. And all of them are preparing for conversion. You may not see them here, but they are online. The body of Christ is beyond one denomination. Say I hear. Let me summarize. What is the lesson this morning? I started by telling you that the ministry of the Holy Spirit did not nullify the ministry of God's servants. That you have the Holy Spirit does not mean you should not have a pastor. And I also made you understand that it's an error now in the end time. They are criticizing pastors all over, ministers all over online. Don't join them. And what did I tell you? I said ministers are God's Sorry, I said ministers are God, sorry, God's servants are human agents of the Holy Spirit to help us to understand the ways of salvation better. So who is a minister? They are agents of the Holy Spirit that will help us understand the ways of salvation better. That's why God will judge any minister that joined to make innocent young Christians to backslide. Now look at look at sister, someone like sister Adu now. Young innocent. If you give her money, she can even decide to say, I'm going to give my pastor to keep it for me. We must treasure their soul. Don't say I will spend the money. What we should do? When did you give me money? Can you prove it? Even when I do business with members, when I say do business, I don't do buy and sell. Maybe I buy something. I went to get food somewhere. You know, there's this woman from my mentor's church in our area. We used to buy things from her. I have forgotten that they've known me with that principle. Thank you. I love this picture. So I bought something of 1,200. One on, one on, 1, I gave her one five. He said, she said, sir, sir, if I say we don't have change of 300, go with 500, I know you, you will not collect it. I now smile. He said, sir, what do I do? I say, you hold my change. Because they know my philosophy. I will not go with your money. I used to tell them, if you say, okay, I may not remember. And if I don't remember, some of you will be angry that pastor is owing me so, so and so and he has not paid. So I prefer that let my change be with you than it is with me. So when she said it, I remember my, my philosophy. I don't want anybody's soul to be lost because of me. That's how you should live as Christians. And that's how you must live as ministers. Are you blessed this morning? Have you learned something? Please, anywhere they are speaking against ministers, don't join them. Just leave them. You know, if everybody begins to have this understanding, very soon, they will soon fade online. But if you like, bah, you, you press like, you are helping them to grow popularity. You know something when they say, now I know the, come and see the secret of us. Okay, yeah, 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 you want to quickly open it. Don't even bother to go there. And I've told you, servants of God are humans. They are not angels. They can make mistakes. That's why I taught you that how do you follow them? You, you don't just do all they do or say. Anything they teach you and anything they do, check it from scriptures. Is it by blicker? If it is, follow. If it is not, put it aside. Clear? Let's keep you on our feet. If you are clapping, clap. Open it. 
small. My 